turn this off so we don't have any stupid noises. All right, so first yeah, thing we're going to do is go over to the F10 map, and we've got 99 X-Ray for the Tacan station here at Almond So I'll pop that into my jet. Ninety nine, transmit receive. We'll bring our HSI over to Tacan and our ADI as well. Okay. So let's say we're talking to um, ATC and they tell us uh, you know, Spud one, fly direct to the Almond Tacan station on the two eight zero degree radial. So basically, we're just going to pop that into our course line as the reciprocal heading. So we're going to subtract 280 degrees. So that'll give us a inbound course line of 100 degrees. So basically, we're just going to kind of come off to our right-hand side and then intercept this line and fly this line inbound to the TACAN station. So we'll go ahead and unpause here. And on our course line, We'll bring it down to 100, and then we'll just gently roll our jet off to the right-hand side. And I'm just going to go for a shallow intercept angle here, so I'm probably just going to uh, level off right at about 125 degrees here or so. There we go. About right there should be good. And now we're just going to be nice and patient and wait for our CDI to start to center up. And then we'll make a left-hand turn back to 100 degrees here. Okay. Yep. So we're just being nice yeah. and patient. <laughs> here she comes. So let's come back off to the left to 100 degrees. And looks like the CDI is no longer centering. So we'll level off just a little bit here, and now we'll just go for a nice shallow intercept angle as she gets closer and closer. And once she's real close, we'll start to roll off to the left again to bring our heading to 100. Got it. Yep. And one thing that a lot of people forget is that our ADI here is also a compass as well. So we can see that 100 heading right here as well as we can see it down on our HSI. So it looks like we're gonna come through it just a little bit, but I'm not too worried about it because we're pretty darn close and we'll just re-intercept her. There we go. And yeah. just keep that left-hand turn I coming. See. Okay, okay. Just a hair to kind of recenter up our radial. We'll roll back to wings level. She's getting nice and close, so we'll come back to the right just slightly, just a hair, and we'll roll out at one zero zero degrees. Okay, so we can see on our HSI here, we've got the CDI nice and centered up, which means we're flying inbound on the 280 radial. And our course line, of course, is up at the top, and we're flying at a heading of 100 degrees on top of the 280 radial. We can see this a little bit easier up on the ADI here, because we can see we're definitely flying at a heading of 100 there. Okay, so let's say okay, yeah, we're, yeah. Getting, we're getting pretty close to, so if we were to kind of draw another line here through our jet, look at that, we're right on the 280 <laughs> radial coming out of the Almond Hod Tacan station. So let's say the ATC comes up and tells us, hey, Spud-1, we need you to fly outbound from the Almond Hod Tacan station on a radial of uh, 0, 050 0 degrees. So no problem, we can do that. No, and we'll basically fly inbound to the Tacan station. We'll wait till we get a little bit closer. And as we see the needles start to flip, we'll go ahead and reset to our course line to 050 degrees, and we'll fly outbound on the 050 radial. Okay. Is this starting to make a little more sense? Yeah, though uh, I'm probably jumping ahead on it too. Uh, 
my yep. next uh, logical to me anyway is so do I have to overhead the attack at every time I want to like make that adjustment or how can I go okay well, the I'm coming reason, in on this radio the reason why ATC is doing this is there could be we, this airport could be deep in a valley and so there's a mountain right here mm -hmm. and there's a mountain right here and the only way to safely navigate between the two mountains is right on the 280 radial to the tack end and outbound on the 050 radial or Got there, it. there could be a thunderstorm right here and a thunderstorm right here. And ATC can see on their radar scopes, this is the only way to safely traverse through the area. So that's okay. the kind of situation that we would use for this. And another thing to point yeah, out yeah. here is we can see on our HSI, our CDI needle is starting to come off to the left, even though we were really close and spot on inbound. And that's because we're only four nautical miles away from the Tacan station, and the radials are getting closer and closer together, so the CDI needle is getting more and more sensitive. So at a certain point, I need to actually stop chasing the sensitive CDI needle and just fly the what I have on over, wait for the flip, then turn to my heading for the next course line. Does that make sense? I, I yes, know it's a yes. bit. I know it's a bit esoteric, and it's uh, hard. Part, it's hard to understand. Right, that part <laughs> makes sense to me. Okay. As I was like, it's it's basically the like a giant stretched out compass across the whole map. I'm flying on this line, yep. and as I get closer, that offset becomes like the spokes on the wheel getting closer together. Exactly. That's exactly what it is. So okay. So uh, we'll wait until we start to see the needles flip. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make that turn to a heading of 050 degrees. So we're getting close. Here comes the flip. Yeah. It's starting. Cool. And there she is. Yeah. Getting at the two miles to see it's going. Perfect. There's the flip. So we're going to make a turn to a heading of 050 degrees. And as we're making that turn, we can move our course line to 050, and that way we can preempt flying too far away from that yeah. radial in the turn. And now what we'll do uh, to, re yes, yes. to re-intercept the correct radial, the 050 here, we're gonna turn and continue our turn to the left to a heading of like 030 so we can re-intercept. And we can see on the map here, here's our radial. We've come a little bit far away from it, probably further than I would have liked, but we're on the way back towards it here. It's also worth noting that fighter jets fly pretty darn fast, like we're at 400 indicated here. So yeah. that's why we're getting so far away from these radials. Things like airliners and, uh, you know, Cessnas and things wouldn't be getting so far away because they fly a lot slower. So everything in yeah. fighter jets happens a lot faster, quite obviously. Yeah. All right, so we'll roll out at zero three zero degrees. IFF is good at the friendly. Here she comes, and we will roll on out. Beautiful. And we'll just wait until okay. this we also intercept. Works. Yeah. Makes a lot more sense. Perfect. And then if we look that, on the F10 line that, that we're intercepting, I, yep. I was viewed it as. Yes. Viewed it as what? Sorry? And I think when you showed me on the. Um, uh, when, you sh like, when you showed on the uh, other aircraft, that it extends infinitely. It's, it just goes forever. I was yep. always looking at it like it's there, it's just on the line. <laughs> but yeah. it's, it's more like it's a. It's an infinite line that, that goes through that extends, the... yeah, that extends off into infinity essentially. So we can see the CDI starting okay. to come back to the center. So that means that we're just going to make a gentle right turn back to zero five zero on the heading, and hopefully get ourselves right on top of the radial. So we'll come back off to the right. And we'll probably come through it a little bit, but that's okay. We'll make it work. Yeah. 
And here comes 050, and it looks like we intercepted our 050 radio almost perfectly. Looks like we came off to the right-hand side of it just a hair, so we'll work our way back on. Just nice, gentle, easy movements, just kind of flying a zigzag pattern almost, trying to straddle that radial. Then, of course, as we get further and further away from the Tacan station, because those spokes on the bicycle wheel are getting further and further apart, it's going to get less and less sensitive, so it's going to become easier and easier to fly on that correct radial. And if we look at the F10 map again, we can see, here, let's draw a new line since we're kind of far away from it now. We can see that the line on the 050 radial goes from the Tacan station directly right through our aircraft there. Does that kind of illustrate how this works for you? Yeah, that's, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, so let's let's take a look at one more thing. So let's say, sure. let's say we've got, you know, a really stormy day and it's just thunderstorms everywhere or we're in a super mountainous area. We're flying through the Alps or something like that. So let's say that, uh, you know, as kind of like an emergency call almost, ATC says, hey, Spud 1 flight, turn direct back to the um, Almenhod Tacan station right away. Well, how would we do that? We can fly directly to the Almenhod Tacan station without even changing our course line. All we need to do is follow the big white arrow here on the outside of our compass rows, just like as if we were flying to waypoints via our navigational computer. Make sense? So let's say, yes. let's say, okay, Spud 1 flight, fly directly to the Almond Hod Tacan station right now. Oh, geez. Okay, let's make sure that we start that turn. And we don't have to worry about our course line. We don't have to worry about our CDI anymore. All we're doing is just turning around and flying directly right back to the um, Almond Hod Tacan station. So we can just wait a little bit here. And again, I'm not caring about the CDI or the course line at all. I'm just caring about the big white arrow that's pointing me right towards the TACAN station. Yeah. And once we're pointed at the TACAN station, I'll explain one other thing that can be a little bit useful for you. Almost there. <clears throat> and we'll go ahead and start rolling out with our nose pointed right at the Almond Hod Tacan station. Ready and boop, there we go. Okay. So let's say we just got that kind of snap order from ATC to fly directly to the Almond Tacan station. And let's say they come back to you and they say, hey, uh, Spud One Flight, what radial are you from the Almond Tacan station? Let's say they lost you on their radar scope and they're trying to find which contact on their radar scope you are again. So we could tell them, since we're inbound to the Tacan station out in front of us, we could tell them what radial we're at because all we need to do is look down to the bottom of our HSI and where this little dot with the line coming out of it is what the radial is going to be. So we can say, oh, looks like we're flying at about the uh, 069 radial inbound to the Tacan station. And so if we wanted to make sure that we stay on that same radial, we can move the course line and we can center up our CDI manually. And then say, yep, looks like we're definitely right on top of that 069 radial outbound or inbound to the Almond Hod Tacan station. And we can see that here. 
We draw a line from the Tacan station yes. to our jet. Uh, 070. So we're really close. 069, 070 with horseshoes and hand grenades. Super close. Yeah. So yeah. that way you can always tell which radial you're on. And when it comes to, say, landing Navy jets on aircraft carriers, you would actually use the radial from your position to the aircraft carrier to tell the aircraft carrier where you're at. So I would tell the aircraft carrier, like, marking moms 0704 for 18 nautical miles. And that way the radar controller aboard the aircraft carrier can look at their radar scope, draw a line across their map on the 070 radial from their aircraft carrier and be like, oh, yep, there he is. There's Spud 1 flight. No problem. Same thing at an airbase. You could say we could be talking to Almond Hot Approach Controller, and he could be like, uh, "Can you go ahead and uh, give me your what you're marking at the moment, so that way I can find you, rather than doing an ident." So you could be like, "Yeah, marking Almond Hot zero uh, seven zero for eighteen nautical miles," and then he could draw that line across his radar scope, see you on that line, and be like, "Yep, boop, there he is. There's Spud One. No problem. Pretty cool, right?" Yes, very cool. <laughs> it's it's well, a it's lot. A, makes for a sure. lot more sense than like, yeah. Well, it's a it's a lot better than. <laughs> it, I can wrap my head around using that and setting and how the radials work and like aiming towards them and how to fly on them. Yeah, it makes a lot more sense to just looking at it going. I don't understand what they're telling me to do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, and it's 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 all a learning process. And once we kind of learn the mechanics of how this stuff works, it makes it much easier to then actually talk to a controller to then be like, OK, now I understand what you're asking me to do. Now I can implement it. You know what I mean? 